The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, it's Alan Yu from Chemium Networks. We're gonna have our webinar today for the licensed microwave best practice. Uh, we're gonna start at uh, three o'clock. Uh, so right now I'm gonna mute the line. We're gonna wait for, um, for the people to arrive and then we will start at three. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's Alan again. Um, we're about uh, two minutes uh, to our webinar. Today we're gonna talk about licensed microwave best practice. And um, so we're gonna talk about it, uh, the some real tips for the during the real practice installation. And also we're gonna talk about a few uh, key features people will uh, benefit from the P2P820 line. Uh, so we're about two minutes to be start. Um, and uh, while we're waiting with people, I will put the things on mute. Uh, and then uh, once uh, we got more people arrived, we will start. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, it's Alan Yu. Um, so I'm the product manager uh, for the um, licensed micro business from Chemium's Networks. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the licensed micro practice. Um, and um, what we're going to do is two things. Uh, I first I want to um, talk about um, certain features we have specifically to improve the spectrum efficiency. Uh, because today, you know, we're running out of spectrum, uh, using a given spectrum to how to achieve more capacity. That's just, uh, 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 quite important for uh, customers. So I'm going to talk about two features we have sup we support on the P2P820 line, the line of sight MIMO, and uh, advanced uh, uh, frequency reuse AFR features. Then I'm going to talk about the uh, BRAC best practice on P2P820. Um, I will focus on two specific configurations, the 2 plus 0 configuration and 1 plus 1 house standby configuration. What I'm going to do is to share with, uh, with you about what we have learned um, from the field uh, for some you know, installation, troubleshooting, uh, and also the things you should aware uh, when you um, trying to set up a two plus or one plus one configuration, so there's a lot more details uh, there uh, for the um, installation part. So let's talk about um, spectrum efficiency. Um, so one of the unique features we have we have today on P2P 820C line uh, is the four by four line of set MIMO. Um, so I believe, I hope most of you guys know the P2P820C. Um, the, the product has been introduced over three years. And uh, it's a full outdoor radio with dual core built in. So it has two carriers. And uh, one of the unique features we support is line of sight MIMO. Um, so we will be able to achieve much higher capacity uh, in the licensed microwave. When we do the uh, 4x4 MIMO, um, so the radio will send in four bit streams, and uh, uh, so you will be able to double the capacity. Um, and uh, so the, the beauty of the line of sight MIMO is um, you're using the same capacity channel, exact the same channel, but you will be able to double the capacity. In this case, uh, we are, we're using, we're achieving this by the uh, antenna spatial depth separation. So on each end of the link, you have two antennas. And when you enable the second core of the radio, then each radio will send in uh, cross polarity, uh, polarity 
so you have the sort of like XPIC links running. But we will be able to reuse the exact same frequency to, to achieve the capacity, uh, to double the capacity in the ideal situation. Uh, so I have a chart next page to show you what is improvement. So in that case, with a single 30 megahertz channel, we will be able to, to deliver one gig uh, throughput full duplex. And uh, we have customers today uh, running on the six gigahertz, for example. Uh, they want to run on high capacity, but unfortunately, there is no uh, 60 gigahertz, 60 megahertz channel available. Um, so they cannot really achieve um, one gig. With a 30 megahertz channel, you can only do about 500 meg with running cross polarity. So uh, with the MIMO, they will be able to uh, double the capacity uh, using their existing channel, which is a big, uh, big um, you know, achievement for them. And um, uh, how we do this? Um, so basically, is the two radials. Um, they have, they need a certain separation for the antenna separation. You can do this separation either by vertical or by horizontal. But both sides have to be the same. You know, like one side was vertical, the other side has to be vertical too. You can do both side horizon separation. Uh, or you can do diagonal separation. It doesn't matter. I mean, basically one was, you know, one side was diagonal, the other side is diagonal, the same thing. Uh, the other thing is the two radio will be interconnected with three cables. Uh, one cable will for the management. The other cable will be uh, it's a, a synchro, uh, it's IF cable uh, to uh, synchronize the face. The third cable we call MIMO cable. It's a 10 gig uh, data stream in in exchange between two radios. So so when two radio transmit at the same time we will be able to um, uh, benefit from the MIMO to get 3D begin. In addition, we will be able to recover the data without you know, consider their interference to each other. So that is uh, uh, how it works. Uh, there are some restrictions uh, or there are some um, uh, uh, requirement for the uh, antenna separation. Uh, so you can see, um, this is the link distance uh, on the on the horizontal line. On the vertical line is the optimal antenna separation. Uh, so let's using uh, you know 11 gigahertz as of one example, the green color. In order to achieve a better performance or ideal performance for lamps at MIMO, let's say we have a six miles link, then the ideal antenna separation is about uh, 37 feet separation um, and then it will in ideal case you will literally double the capacity but of course in, in many of the real deployment you can't reach an optimal separation so on the left side this gives you the formula you will see really how much you can see so h1 and h2 are the antenna separation on each end and uh, the formula is really between the H1 and the product of H1 and the H2 will equal to your optimal, and that will equal to the distance of the link, the times the speed of the light, divided by two times frequency. So this is the formula. When your ratio, when your optimum, optimal versus actual is not in the ideal situation, um, say your H is really not optimal, you're only, you know, 80% or say 70%. If you're 70% of your optimal, let's say the optimal was 37 um, feet. If you're 70% of that, you're about 25 feet separation, right? Which is about eight meters separation. Then you will not be able to double the capacity, but you will still be able to achieve about you know, 80% increase on capacity. So which is still significant uh, benefit there. Even you're only 50% about your separation compared to optimal, you will still be able to achieve 70% of your capacity increase. So which is which is a big benefit for that. For that.
So this is, and we have MIMO uh, link deployed in many, uh, many sites today. Uh, today mainly focus on the, um, uh, you know, 6, 11, 18 gigahertz um, uh, for the deployment we have. Uh, if you're interested for that, please contact your local uh, sales manager. Uh, we're happy to provide the reference site uh, so you can um, you can get a reference, you know, to to uh, to know how they deploy that. Uh, so this is a great feature, uh, not only for uh, immediate deployment, but also uh, for the customer. Like say you have a link deployed today for uh, 500 meg or a gig. And um, in the future, say five, 10 years from now, you want more capacity, but there is no additional channels available. And by uh, reuse your existing channel, but using a space separation, the MIMO will give you the possibility to double the capacity. So this really gives you another way for future protection. So it's a big one uh, for the customers. The other feature I want to talk about today is called advanced frequency reuse. Again, this is a feature uh, we are leveraging the A20C radio, the dual core radio. So think about this is um, if you are in a hop site uh, and you have multiple links you want to shoot for your uh, remote end. And uh, we see the, the, the if you want to reuse the same frequency, you need, a, you need at least a 90 uh, degree angle separation. Uh, so, you know, let's say this is your hub site. You want to shoot for two um, remote site. You can't use the, the frequency in, you know, 5, 10, 15 degrees because you literally start create interference to each other, right? You have to go with a separate channel um, if you are uh, narrower angular separation. Um, the, uh, the, to fully reuse, you need a 90 degree. So the AFR features is a feature we will be able to reuse the frequency and but reduce uh, the uh, angle separation requirement. Uh, so, so let's talk about it. Um, so the, the benefit when we have the AFR features, we will be able to cancel the interference between the remote site. So how we do that is think about this, this mine is, if on the hub site, when you transfer on the F1, right? When you transfer on F1 to this site A, you transfer F1 site B, the A will receive the interference from B. B will receive the interference from A, right? Because the same beaming was sending on both sides, uh, the, the frequency. Then um, they cause interference. What we do is, we will pre-distortion um, um, or the, 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 the data at the hub side. So when, when F1, the B side, receive a delta from A, we will send a minus delta of side A to B side. So when B side receive that delta, it will cancel and fully recover the B data. Same thing for A. So there is a lot of coordination done at the hub side to do the pre-distortion of the data, so we will be able to reuse exact the same frequency, but achieve a much narrower angle separation. Um, so we can, with the AFR features we have, we will be we are able to reduce the angle separation from 90 degree to as low as 15 degree uh, to achieve uh, the frequency reuse. Um, so in that case, you know we will use less channels. Um, to to do the um, to achieve multiple uh, remote site connection, and in this case, rather than you know when we have the earlier case, we have to do a lot of new frequency. Instead, in this case, we will be able to you know reuse a frequency to do the um, connection. Or people saying is instead uh, go with two channels. Uh, I, I will be able to, you know, if they're adjacent channel, I can combine the channels to be a wider channel. And then I will be able to, uh, using this two channel, the newer wider channel, combined one, to deliver higher capacity for each remote site. So that's a different angle. You know, the first one is really, uh, I, I use less channel. Uh, the second way is, I still using four channels, but I can combine the adjacent channel to a wider channel 
to give you more capacity. That's a you know that's a net different way to using this. And um, when we do this configuration, uh, we we not only support a single one plus o, we can also support XP configurations. Meaning is you know uh, for each remote site we're doing both vertical and the polarity, uh, vertical and horizontal polarity. So when the X peak, uh, we will be able to deliver more capacity. And uh, that is the beauty of the AFR features. And at the hub side, it's always require A20C. And on the remote side, if you're doing a one plus O, you will be able to use an A20S. A20S is a single core for outdoor radio. For more details for the product, you can go to our webpage. Um, but uh, if you're running a two plus O, on the remote end, you're using an A20C radio, so you can run XPIC. On the hub side, you have two A20C radio. Actually, they will be also uh, require a MIMO setup uh, in order to, uh, because uh, the hub side need a lot of exchange on the data to do the pre-distortion. Pre so the configuration on the hub side actually is very like the um, A20, uh, the MIMO setup with uh, uh, with a lot of interconnection between the two of the A20C. So what the AFR do uh, is, um, you know, in cancel interference. Uh, here the chart, you can see how much we do. So we achieve about uh, 30 dB improvement. Uh, in, in this case, in the, in the depends on the, you know, uh, the angular separation. Uh, so it's about 25 plus, um, you know, improvement you can see compare with, uh, you know, class two, class four antenna. If you compare with class three, uh, actually we're talking about uh, more than 30 dB here. This is about maybe 35. Uh, 30, 35 dB improvement here. If we're compared to class four, uh, even here we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, here is 30, uh, 40 here, five here. So it's about 20 dB improvement um, on the um, interference cancellation. So it's a great feature for people using uh, deployed in a more density area uh, when you need more links uh, uh, for a hub site. Uh, so it's a great feature to have. We also have the uh, a specific tool uh, to help you pre-planning the planning of the AFR features. Uh, we're using the pass loss. There is a specific template uh, for pass loss four, four and pass loss five to planning a uh, AFR link. Uh, so for more, for more details for that, uh, you can also contact our uh, regional sales manager or technical manager. Uh, and we were happy to share more details about AFR features. Uh, they're both available on the uh, A20 uh, CNS um, uh, platform. Uh, you can see that. All right, we're 15 minutes, so, uh, you know, start our webinar. Uh, and then I'm going to change the topic to the uh, some field implementation things uh, about uh, the uh, things you should aware for A20 implementation. Um, of course, there are some common things, very common things like, you know, uh, this is licensed microwave. You know, uh, we have the uh, a lot of server band. For 11 gigahertz, we have two server band can cover the whole spectrum. For 18 gigahertz, we have a single radio. 23 gigahertz, we have three server band. Uh, for six gigahertz, we have two server band. So you can't just buy a radio, hopefully cover the whole thing. Uh, you, you know, now general recommendation is you should really know uh, the channel you're going to be assigned before you order licensed microwave. And um, um, some other thing I want to talk general stuff before we jump to the specific configuration is um, the A20C or A20S uh, is a full auto radio. We support uh, the minus 48 DC input. We also support uh, the PoE input. And uh, there are people thinking about, uh, can I do a power redundancy with minus 48 DC and, uh, and also the PoE? The answer is no. You cannot really achieve a power redundancy with both. Um, um, uh, if you lost a power, the radio will need to be reset um, to, to be connected to the other one. So, uh, so there is an outage. So really, it doesn't give you a seamless power redundancy. Uh, but the PIDU, the power unit you get 
for A20, it does have two DC input. Uh, so that gave you the power redundancy. So that's a different thing. Uh, so you're not achieved the power redundancy on the radio, but you achieve the power redundancy with the PIDU. Uh, the, the other thing is uh, there are some common, common things you should aware is the A20 radio do support uh, the loopback uh, for both the ESAN loopback, RF loopback, TDM loopback. Uh, that do give you a lot of uh, advantage when you do the troubleshooting uh, to narrow down the, where the issue is. So uh, please use the loopback if you can uh, in, in the case when you, when you need to do any troubleshooting. We also, the radio, uh, very easy to be set up. We have an installation wizard there to support one plus O configuration, um, the one plus one house standby configuration, or the two plus O uh, aggregation configuration. Um, so I would highly recommend if the configuration is supported by the installation wizard, use the installation wizard because only four steps you will get the link set up. Unless you really want to do yourself to, to go through all different screen to fine tune all the settings, you could do the you know your your own way to go to the each menu to set up the the link to create your own service connection. Um, I, I would say, unless you're really comfortable, feel very confident you can do that, go with that, uh, because that definitely requires you know what you're doing. Otherwise, you know, installation wizard probably still your best friend when you do a link setup. Okay, so uh, that's uh, those. Those are the general common things. So let's talk about specific configuration you should aware. Uh, let's start with the easy one, two plus O. So for two plus O configuration, uh, you can achieve the two plus O with A20S. So two of the S radio share a common antenna using a coupler uh, or splitter. Uh, you can do the two plus O configuration. Actually, it should be go with a splitter. The coupler gives you a different uh, uh, system gain. You should really go with a splitter. Go with a two using a two in a two plus O configuration. There are a few things uh, you should aware. Um, in the two plus O configuration, uh, you can go with a cross pole uh, or a single pole, right? And um, uh, if you go with a cross pole, you using you, you actually you're using the OMT orthogonal. A mounting kit uh, for the um, uh, cross pole. If you are doing a single pole, you are using a splitter. It doesn't change the, the rule here for the first row. When you are sharing the single antenna, make sure the ODU are the, in the same suburb band. So um, take example, let's say 11 gigahertz. We have two radios band radios, channel one, channel six, and channel seven to channel 13. Um, make sure your channel is covered by the same band radio. So, um, so for example, you have one is channel two, then the other one has to be, you know, you know, within the one to six, because that is the radio you can cover. You can't have two channels, one with channel one, one is channel 13. Uh, those two plus O link will not work. Um, so make sure your channel can be covered by the same suburb band. If you have a channel four, channel eight, we do have a, another suburb channel from channel four to channel nine. So that will cover your uh, those configurations. So go to the link planner. When you choose the channel you are assigned, the link planner will tell you which ODU you should go. So make sure you have the uh, the two channel was covered by the same suburban radio. The reason we need that one is because of return loss, um, the the same suburban radio with a filter, you will be able to cover the return loss. Otherwise, you will start to interfere with each other. The second bullet I want to talk about is um, XPIC or cross pole setup. Um, because when we sell the antenna, all antenna we sold is a single polarity antenna. When you change to a cross pole antenna uh, using the OMT, you do order an OMT adapter. What you need to do is to remove the rectangular adapter on the antenna by default, 
because it was a single pole antenna, and replaced with the OMT adapter, then this antenna will change to a dual pole antenna. We do have customers who didn't put the OMT, they just leave the rectangular antenna up uh, by default there. In that case, when you install the, the whole thing, you will only have one polar, polarity work because by default, it was a single pole dish. So make sure the single, the rectangular adapter was removed and replaced with the OMT adapter. Second thing is when you do the XPIC antenna alignment, right? Um, you, you should achieve a, a XPC, the cross pole discrimination by 25 dBm or better. Uh, you can read from the, U, uh, the, the, the UI on the radio. But really, this is not the way you should do the alignment. The alignment, the, the, the simple way to do the alignment is just to buy a lever from, the, from Home Depot or some, some tooling you know, store. You put, you put the lever or level, sorry, level flat on your antenna, you know, and then make sure your antenna is, is leveled on both ends then you're perfect aligned. Then you do your alignment, normal alignment practice. You don't need to, 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 to because XPO, XPIC need a very good alignment on the both polarity. So as long as your level, uh, the antenna is leveled, meaning you know horizontal leveled, you're good. You don't need to change the plate, adjust the plate uh, to do the uh, XPIC alignment. So just using the level, uh, to do your, you know, alignment for the polarity. And when you do a troubleshooting for cross pole setup, always start with a single one plus O setup to see it works or not. Check your vertical, check your horizontal. Um, that, that's the first step to start with, just to narrow down the issues. So that is about X pole, uh, you know, X cross pole uh, setup things. When you do a two plus O configuration, you know, let's say A20S or A20C, uh, when you do a two plus O configuration, um, when you have two cables come down from the tower, uh, from radio, we really don't care. We can do copper or fiber. But our experience is most of the switch, they can't mix media. You, can, you can't have a, a fiber and a copper and do the two plus O with a uh, lag protocol works properly. Uh, mode of switch we saw is the only, they, they recommend go with the same media. So if you're both copper, both cable go with copper. If you're fiber, goes with fiber. Okay. The last one I want to mention is A20C two plus O configuration. A20C support from you know, 3.5 megahertz all the way up to 80 megahertz. There is a specific limitation on 80 megahertz. You can't have one channel on 80 megahertz, the other one on 20 or 40 or 60. If you do a 80 megahertz, both channel has to be on 80 megahertz. Okay, you can't have a 180, one is non-80. That's one limitation. The second thing is, if you are using a two plus O configuration with A20C, on the 80 megahertz channel, we do not support MCBC. MCBC is limited for the 60 megahertz channel, and it will cap the capacity to one gig. So really, if you're running on 80 megahertz channel or two of the 80 megahertz channel, you shouldn't be using MCBC. If you want to use MCBC, then you don't need 80 megahertz. You set up the radio was 60 megahertz. That gave you, you know, uh, more than one gig. Uh, so you're perfect fine. The last thing is 80 megahertz on the 80 megahertz channel. We do not support MIMO. MIMO only support up to 60 megahertz. So those are the restrictions or limitations you should aware. Okay. The second thing I want to move is one plus one configuration. So one plus one configuration. Uh, there are a few things we should uh, you should fully aware. Uh, number one is uh, we can using a splitter or a coupler to do one plus one. 
the only difference is coupler gives you asymmetrical uh, loss. The main port has much less loss than the secondary port. Normally, there is about seven, uh, five dB, six dB difference. Actually, it's about five point, uh, uh, five point three dB difference. The main port is about 0.7 dB. Um, the secondary port, I think, is about 6.3 dB. Uh, you can, I mean, that's about 6 dB difference. The splitter give you an equal uh, line loss. Each of them is about 3. Point, I think it's about 3.7 dB uh, different uh, loss on every port. So in general speaking, we recommend this go with coupler. If your link is extremely short, uh, you may want to consider using splitter up to, you know, it done, it's really only impact the system gain. It doesn't really impact the, uh, the setup itself. The second and most important thing is the hardware must be the same part number in the whole standby setup. So uh, make sure in the, uh, uh, when you put two radios on each end, they are the same part number. You can't just using, let's say, uh, using 11 gigahertz as a one example, saying you're using channel four. Uh, so one radio was the subband band channel one, channel six. The other one is subband band channel four, channel nine. Technically, they both cover your channel four, but a one plus one configuration will not work because the system will check is this hardware our identical hardware before a handover. So hardware has to be the same part number. Second most important thing is uh, the software has to be on the same, same software versions. Uh, so make sure uh, your software is same version in the one plus one configuration. There are two modes for, for how, uh, how standby. One we call split protection, one we call line protection. So I'm gonna go through that one in a little bit more details. Split protection, um, so using A20S as example, when we do the split protection mode, basically the only configuration we support is go with a fiber Y. Uh, so you have uh, two radios, active one and standby one. Then the, the, they were using a fiber Y. What we offer is uh, outdoor fiber and then we have a Y cable indoor. So uh, the configuration is ready is uh, you go with a fiber cable uh, uh, for the outdoor. Once they come to your equipment room using a, a fiber Y, which is about uh, three meters long uh, to interconnect to, to your um, switch equipment. So this is the split protection. In split protection, we do not support copper. Only fiber Y is, re is supported, okay? The second configuration we call line protection mode. Um, so same thing for this example is, uh, so you have the A20S, you have an active and standby. In this case, you can go with either fiber or copper. It doesn't matter. Um, and, um, then you will enable the LACP on the radio. On the switch, you will also have the switch support the LACP. And the both port uh, need to be on the uh, LCP mo LCP mode. And, in, and when the, the radio also will be interconnected with a management port for the protection information to be exchanged. And when the radio, let's say the master, the active one for whatever reason failed, when the standby take over, the data will be a reroute uh, from the, uh, using the LCP protocol. Uh, basically, it will move to the secondary radios. Um, so that will achieve the one plus one protection. And this is called line protection. In this case, you can use in copper, but then it's require a additional, you know, switch. Make sure the switch support LCP. Okay. A20G is a little bit unique. Um, so A20G how standby? Um, I would say today 90% of the customer uh, actually using the uh, the a single 
a dual modem to do the redundancy. Uh, so ready is a redundancy on the ODU side. Um, so what the configuration looks like is you have two radios, two ODUs uh, up to the tower. Then in the indoor, you have a single modem with dual, uh, uh, I will say this way, single IDU with dual modem. So they will protect each other. You can, you can have a full redundancy on the ODU side. You share the common uh, data interface. So you have the single uh, TDM interface, you have the single uh, Excel alarm interface, and also you have the sing, uh, you have the ESAT sync interface. So all the data interface is shared. You really have to re achieve the redundancy on the ODU side. And we see this is the most popular and uh, cost effective way uh, for the um, for the um, host standby configuration. Although we do have customers in the uh, public safety market. Um, um, they want a full redundancy. So instead of ODU redundancy, they also want to achieve redundancy on the IDU. So we have a similar setup. The first one is called unit protection, uh, unit redundancy split mode protection. So in this case, you have two individual IDU. And uh, you can go with uh, fiber Y um, and um, uh, for a split mode, um, the two radio will provide full redundancy on the IDU. Um, and uh, also you have the full redundancy on the RODU, uh, the ODU with a coupler connected to the antenna. Um, or, I mean, you can also go with a two separate antenna if you want, doesn't matter. Uh, so this gives you the split mode. In this case, uh, you can go with a fiber Y, uh, or you can go with a copper Y. For the copper Y, you can only do 100 mag. You cannot do, um, you know, more than 100 mag uh, with a with a with a copper Y cable. So that is a split mode. The other configuration, uh, well, this is the two plus or split mode. Basically, uh, let's say you run an X pick, uh, then. Uh, you have two uh, IDU. Each IDU is a dual modem IDU. Again, you can go with the fiber Y uh, to do the uh, split uh, split mode. Um, that's no big difference. Uh, the other other one I want to talk about is called line protection unit redundancy. So in this case, uh, you have the two modem. Uh, they will provide redundancy to each other. And you want you can using either fiber or copper uh, to do a, a line protection mode. Uh, it's very similar. Then you will have an external switch to do the line protection. Uh, the radio need to have the LCP enabled, and on the switch uh, you have to uh, using the LCP as well. Uh, so this will provide the. Uh, line protection. So you're not limited for the fiber wire connection anymore. You can go with uh, copper um, to do the line protection. Similar thing, if you do a two plus O configuration, uh, you can also do the line protection with the external switch. And, uh, uh, and that one uh, will give you the full redundancy, uh, not only on the ODU, but also on the IDU, okay? So this is um, uh, the, the one plus one configuration. Uh, in the, with the A20G, um, you will need uh, some special cables for the protection interface. Uh, and also when you do the uh, line protection, because you don't share the common um, user interface, you also need uh, a fiber Y if you are using TDM. Uh, so we also sell the special cable for TDM protection. And that gave you the um, uh, the fiber Y. Uh, that gave you the uh, uh, Ethernet line protection mode. Okay. Um, so we covered today. We covered um, uh, four topics. Uh, we covered the um, uh, two features which which gave you the um, uh, phenomenal improvement on spectrum efficiency. 
Uh, one is 4 by 4 line offset MIMO, so you will be able to reuse the exact same frequency, but just using by using the spatial diversity, you will be able to double the capacity using the A20C platform. We also talk about AFR features, advanced frequency reuse features, uh, so you will be able to narrow your angle separation by frequency reuse instead of requiring a 90 degree frequency reuse. Uh, with the AFR features, we can reduce the angle separation to 15 degree to achieve a frequency reuse. Uh, those are great features for not only for today's deployment, it's also uh, it's a good feature uh, to give you the uh, future protection uh, so you will be able to double the capacity or deploy more length in density area. We talk about um, um, best practice for A20, um, specifically for two plus O configuration and one plus one house standby configuration. Since you need to pay attention uh, and since you're aware, um, you know, for a two plus O configuration, um, what is the, you need a common suburban radio, cover two channels. And also for the A20C, you cannot combine 80 megahertz with other channels. You can only combine two of the 80 megahertz. For the one plus one configuration, uh, you have to make sure you're using the same pan number radio on each end, and also make sure you are on the same software version. Uh, there is two different configurations we support on house standby. One is split mode. You can go with a fiber Y. If you want to go with a copper, you should go with a line protection mode. Uh, so those are the common things. Uh, those are the things you should you should aware or pay attention in the house standby configuration. That's a good summary for today. And uh, if you have any further questions, uh, please put your uh, raise your question uh, under the um, uh, the uh, web um, this um, uh, what this one the, uh, uh, the 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 panel there. You can raise your questions. And now I'm gonna answer uh, questions one by one. The first one is, um, it's a coupler the same as combiner. Um, I mean, the coupler uh, is, is not a combiner. Um, or I mean, coupler is a coupler, right? And uh, as I said, one main port, uh, there's two, two port there. Uh, uh, one the main port go to your uh, has less line loss. It's it's point I think it's point seven dB. I, I, you know you can you can double depend on the frequency. Uh, a little, uh, but it's point seven uh, dB. Uh, the second report uh, is about I think six point seven. So there is about six dB difference between the main port and and uh, second report. Mainly we're using coupler for uh, one plus one configuration. So your, your main path has much less line loss, uh, give you a better, better system gain, and your secondary pass uh, give you the read, provide the hardware redundancy. And that is how coupler works, okay? Um, second question I have is, is there any interest in Equipping A20 with a common coupler uh, fiber cable with quick disconnection IP68 connectors. Um, I don't, I don't see my customer have this kind of request today. But um, I, I keep in mind if we have this kind of requirement. Um, I, I can definitely reach out to you. Okay. Let's see what other questions we have. So far, I only have those two questions. Uh, I have one more here, actually. I think it covers this one, the frequency. Is there any interest on this one? Okay, next one is, when testing before installation, is there a minimum separation for A20S radio? 
Um, I'm not fully understand what you mean the minimum separation. So um, it's a licensed microwave. So when when you want to do a testing before installation, I assume you mean really mean the staging service. So you put the configuration, test the radio, make sure everything works. Um, so there's two ways you can do this. One is you put the radio in the chamber, and uh, uh, and as long as you don't put the two radio face to face each other, the leaking from the antenna interface will, you know, get enough signal to to get the link set up. So, but you're in the chamber, so you're fine. The other way is we do sell bench test uh, gears, so you will be able to make a, a connection for the A20C, uh, or you know, we also sell the same thing for A20S and A20G. What it does is uh, the kit include a waveguide to SMA adapter. Uh, we also have SMA cables and attenuators uh, in the SMA uh, interface. Uh, so you will be able to set up the whole thing and with uh, all the connections. Uh, so you don't leak the signal out. Um, you don't leak the signal, uh, and then uh, you will be able to do the um, pre-staging service. Or uh, you know, just set up the radio, make sure everything is okay before you put the radio on the tower. Um, you know, we highly recommend that. Um, I think if that's the question, I'm not sure that covers your question or not. But that is the uh, there, there is no separation thing. Uh, if you're talk about the channel separation um, in a two plus O configuration, you can do adjacent channel. You don't need to put any protection channel in between. We support adjacent channel. Um, if on the S radio, so you know uh, that's not a problem. There's no separation you needed for that. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Next one I have is what is the theory behind the reduced angle separation from 90 degree to a hundred to a 50 degree? Okay, so. Um, I'm gonna draw a pen here. Um, hopefully this this will work. So let's say this is set A. This is set B, right? So this is the hub site. When when we send the two signals, uh, bad drawing. Anyway, this is F1. This is F1 as well. So when we send you know, broadcast from the or what's the signal here? Set A will receive A, the signal from A plus B, right? So the interference from B, B will receive B, signal B plus A interference. That's that's what I. What we do is the site A will tell my hub site saying is actually this is the interference I receive. So before I send, while I'm not sending A, instead I send A plus, I, I will send A minus BI to site A. Okay, it's a little bit oversimplified. It's a little bit more complicated than that. And then when the hub sends to B, instead of sending B, I will send B minus AI. All right. And then when when A receives the signal, actually A will receive A minus B I. Right? But because also, also A will receive the interference from B. When they add the B interference, the interference will be canceled. So the A side will have received its fully deserved A. Same thing for B. Of course, it's not simply like that because you know when you send the B and the B, B and B minus AI, when this receive, it will be a it will be not a B. I actually is a B minus AI. 
times i, this is a plus this, right? This is the way. Um, because the a this a plus actually a was a plus bi. And we have the algorithm will be able to cancel the bi. And uh, sorry, a minus bi. So one is a minus bi, one is b minus ai times i. So we will be able to cancel the bi, uh, bi, and the a will be recovered. And that is how it works. Um, uh, it's very unique. I mean, we're, this is a very unique feature on A20. And that is the way how we improve why we can achieve uh, the the um, reduced angle separation. Actually, during our uh, uh, initial testing, uh, is uh, the 15 dB will not compromise any of the modulation. So we will be able to support a full modulation from QPSK all the way up to 2 kquam. If you're willing to sacrifice your modulation, let's say you're willing to sacrifice to um, 256 qualm, your top rate will not be 250, uh, 2 kqam, you only do 256 qualm, you will be able to even go down to 5 degree, uh, much narrower than 15 degree. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, we test in our lab, actually in the, in the real deployment when we have in the, in the first deployment, uh, it's, it's almost like uh, only two or three dB separation there. Uh, it's, it's a great feature, you know, a very creative way uh, created from the product team. So uh, it's an amazing one. Hopefully that gave you more, you know, ideas on how Sir in theory it works. Uh, that's the question I have. Uh, let me see what else I have here. Okay, that uh, next question I have is uh, a question about a 60 meg a narrower channel, 60 megahertz uh, or 80 megahertz. So, uh, okay. So when you do, uh, on the link planner, when you do wider channel support, um, uh, there's two ways you do the wideband support. One is you truly using the whole 80 megahertz. In that case, you, you, you are required a true 80 megahertz channel radio. The other way is people actually don't want to pay an 80 megahertz channel to using the real 80 megahertz, but they license for 80 megahertz only using 60, using the narrow band radio. You know, like 11 gigahertz, FCC only allow 40 megahertz and 80 megahertz. So if you license for 80 megahertz, uh, you want to using fully utilize them, you go with true 80 megahertz radio. What the people are saying is, no, I want to license for 80 megahertz, but I want to using the narrower radio, which is 60 megahertz radio. So, so that is why we give an option in the link planner. So people will be able to license for 80 megahertz, but using a 60 megahertz channel to fit in there, to achieve a higher throughput rather than limit for 40 megahertz channel. That's really the reason we put in there. Um, uh, because, you know, hopefully that will not cause confuse, but that is already the way it means the meaning there. Okay. Uh, next one is why we cannot model the 60 megahertz on the link planner. So you could, I mean, that's what I said. You, if you're using a narrower radio uh, with 80 megahertz channel, you, that is your model ready using a 60 megahertz. If you are using true 80 megahertz, why you want to model for a 60 megahertz? So when the true 80 megahertz channel radio was choosed, we only gave you the 80 megahertz because that is what you, we expect you to do. If you are using a narrower channel, uh, we do not want you to buy a wider channel radio because you literally waste your money. So if you are using a 40 or a 60 megahertz channel, we you should buy the narrower ch narrower channel radio. So uh, so that is why when you choose the real 80 megahertz channel, you only model on 80 megahertz. Okay. Next one I have is uh, does the angle separation works for regular call located microwave links, not PMP case? Um, 
it's it's not a PMP case actually. Maybe I didn't maybe I didn't clarify that clear. Um, when we talk about this um, angle separation on the on the half side, it is two of the point to point link. This is not a broadcast uh, sector antenna thing. We talk about two the two point point link. Okay, is two P two P link. When we have a single A twenty C here. One core will do a point point to here. One core will do a point point here to two different directions. So this is not a PMP configuration. Um, if I cause that confuse, uh, you know, that's really not what I mean for. Um, we need to re-clarify that. It's two point point link. Uh, licensed microwave do not support any broadcasting thing. Uh, you know, uh, like a uh, sector stuff. This is point point links. Okay. Um, next, let me see. I have more questions here or not. So questions still on the AFR features. Um, the question is, uh, when you standardize the degree, is that a specific modulation? Actually, 15 degree, we can support all modulation. If you go narrower, less than 15, you may sacrifice uh, your top, top uh, rate uh, of modulation. Uh, it really depends on how much you're going to reduce. As I said, we do have a... Uh, AFR, uh, we have a tool to help you planning the AFR, AFR links. Uh, so if you are interested to deploy uh, AFR features, uh, uh, you know, please let us know. Okay. Uh, let me see what else I have. That's all the questions I have so far. Uh, we're, we're five minutes to the top of the hour. Um, if no more questions, um, thank you very much, um, and uh, the session is recorded, um, and we will put this one under the service, uh, under our uh, forum, uh, and uh, if you are uh, like to replay that, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, also, keep keep using the uh, forum. Uh, forum is a very good place to share your um, your best, best practice for P2P820. Uh, or if you have any questions for, um, you know, P2P link deployment, you can also post it there uh, where, you know, we are happy to exchange um, at that forum place. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, uh, everybody. And hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.